This is a tip for your uh, nonprofit friends looking to throw races. So if you find some key partners, um, you can basically ask them for whatever you want to ask for. You know, they can negotiate, but if you get five, ten big sponsors, that can cover the whole expense of the race plus more, and you might be able to pocket the entry fee. You're on a mission and you just need more people to know about it. And whether you're brand new to marketing or a seasoned pro, we are all looking for answers to make marketing decisions with purpose. I'm Monica Pitts, a techie, crafty business owner, mom, and aerial dancer who solves communication challenges through technology. This podcast is all about digging in and going digital. I'll share my marketing know-how and business experience from almost 20 years of misadventures. I'll be your backup dancer so you can stop doubting and get moving towards marketing with purpose. Hello, and welcome to Nonprofit Marketing with Purpose. My name is Monica Pitts, and I'm your host and the lucky lady who gets to interview our guest today. Now, before we jump into the interview, I have a favor to ask. Will you review this podcast wherever you're listening, whether it's on Spotify or Amazon Music or iTunes? See, our goal is to help more nonprofits just like you have less stressful and more successful marketing so that they can do more of their good work and make our world a better place. But I can't help them until I meet them. And so your review can actually help me change that. When you leave a review, it helps this podcast show up when people are looking for answers to the problems that the podcast is meant to help them solve. So if you are a nonprofit marketing with purpose fan already, and you haven't reviewed the podcast, or if this is your first time and you learn a thing or two, leave a review so we can connect with more awesome nonprofits just like you. Thank you so much in advance. Now let's get to business. Hello everybody and welcome to Marketing with Purpose. Today I have a special guest because I know that so many of you run 5Ks. Okay, so I just said run. And actually when RJ and I talked about run 5Ks, we like you actually do run 5Ks, don't you? <laughs> like literally. I am the event director <laughs> and do all, all the heavy lifting, but I also run them for fun. Yes. Well. We're both dog owners and avid runners. And there are so many nonprofits that host 5Ks. And I thought that this would be a really cool opportunity to connect you guys in a different mind space with a person who's entrepreneurially running 5Ks or producing 5Ks to kind of think about some of the things that he thinks through from a business perspective to make these worthwhile for you to invest your time and energy in and resources in, right? Because ultimately, that is one of the things that the nonprofits need to be thinking about too. You could have a friend raiser or you could have a fundraiser, right? Um, but I know that this isn't your full-time gig. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do every day, and then I can segue us into what in the world made you decide to produce all these 5Ks. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, first, thanks for having me on. Um, I love the energy that you bring, Monica, and May Create is like one of the top you know, agencies around. So um, I just love being associated with you. Um, I'm in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and I run a digital marketing agency myself. It's called HBT Digital. And I've been an event director, a race director, for about 10 years. And the races are in Florida. And they're called the Great Mother's Day Race, the Great Father's Day Race, and the Great Gay 5K. And so you have a digital agency. That's what you're doing on the day-to-day, -day, right? So I just, I mean, like this is a little off script, but do you promote your races using your amazing digital knowledge or, but you probably didn't yeah. start that way, did you? 100%. Well, I started with the races and the races really kicked off in 2012. I've been an agency owner for only two years, um, but I was always on the side. And this is kind of how I got into, you know, doing my own thing was when I was running the race director, you know, we'd have to do our own race promotion. So basically that got me into the Facebook ads and the Google ads and buying specific race keywords. And, you know, 10 years later, it all translated to my own agency. 
But um, I remember just buying specific 5K race keywords in the Tampa Bay market and paying like 40 to 60 cents a click. And we're talking like 10 years ago. It was so cheap. It was so cheap. That's exciting. Um, so how many people do you usually have run in one of these wonderful races? Well, that's a great question. So currently, like the Great Mother's Day race is in Sarasota and we're on Siesta Key Beach. And then in Tampa, we're at Al Lopez Park. Um, it's a park vibe. Um, you run around the park twice. Uh, that's our biggest race. We have about 800 people a year that come to that. And in Sarasota, it's about 350 to 400. Um, we do it on two separate days. So we do it on Mother's Day weekend, but we'll do the Siesta Key Beach race on Saturday. And then Sunday morning, the actual Mother's Day um, at Al Lopez Park. And so what made you decide to do these things? I mean, <laughs> I know that you run, but why, why do one? Like, why produce a race? So I was in grad school at USF um, attending with my, one of my best friends, Claire Sellius. She's actually the co-race director with me. And we're going to grad school at USF and we're sitting in all these marketing classes and, you know, we're learning book knowledge and we were hearing case studies. And we're like, can we do this ourselves? Can we launch a brand? Can we take something that has never existed before, build a community and get people to pay money to run? And we did. We launched it. We took baby steps and uh, the first year we had 150 runners, which way surpassed what I thought, honestly. Um, I was thinking like the first year, we're only going to get like 60, 70 runners. And thankfully, through partnerships and through our own network, we were able to get 150 runners the first year. Now, one of the reasons that I, I even stated it earlier that I wanted to interview you is because you started your business as like a business proposition so um to make money so do your races are they like they're paying for themselves and they're profiting or are they just fun projects so the races are for profit and we definitely tell people that we do donate 10 percent net to a local charity and actually we partnered with the big brothers big sisters of tampa bay for pretty much eight of those 10 years so they're we're really connected with those and actually claire Sellius, the race partner she actually went and became the marketing director at Big Brothers Big Sisters. So it, it, it's kind of weird how things all kind of work out like that. But um, I don't know if that answered the question. Well, I just wanted to know, like, do you make money on them? Like, do they, do they pay for themselves oh. and then and make a profit? Yes. Rate? Yes. I would say more than I expected, less than a full-time job <laughs> well, as a teacher. You're not working at a full-time job to put them on, are you? No, no, no. Yeah. And I don't know how many hours it would take if I really sat there and thought about all of the work that goes into it. Um, what's great is, so I live in Pittsburgh. The races are produced in Florida. So being a digital guy first, um, I can handle 90% of what I need to do from here. I call the parks, I can get online registration up, I can order the t-shirts and blah, 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 do the social media and ads. Um, I actually fly down like race week and Claire and I will put together all the shirts, pickups, do all the running around, grabbing bananas and stuff like that. Um, luckily and thankfully, Claire is my woman on the streets down there. So she's living in uh, St. Pete, which is in Tampa Bay. And if we need to make pickups, meet somebody, go to the parks, shake hands, kiss babies. She's there to do that. That's awesome. So to clarify all of my nonprofit friends, you can run a 5K. When I say run, dang it, I need to stop saying run. Yo, stop saying run, Monica. You can produce a 5K and it doesn't have to be your full-time job. And if you think about it from a business perspective, you can manage to actually make money for your nonprofit while producing a 5K. That's what I just 100%. And you need to be like thinking, you know, as an entrepreneur, you have your own business, right? You have, you know, margins and you have to figure out, do I really want to pay $8 for this really premium t-shirt that looks really cool and maybe the latest technology? Or 
will the $5 shirt suffice? Will it give people the same feeling as the $8 shirt? Same with the medals. Do I need an eight inch medal that looks like uh, Mr. T gold chains? Or can I give them another medal that's a little bit smaller, maybe less colors? Um, there are, you know, things you can negotiate, like things you, non-negotiables, you got to give them a great experience. You got to make sure it's well-timed that your, uh, you know, setup tables and registration are there. You got to have the water and the food and all that, the pictures. So you got to get the basics right, but then you can, there's flexibility on other areas. And I don't, so there's this one organization um, that I met the last time that I ran the Go Girl half marathon and they take old medals and they give them to kids that are like in life-threatening situations and like hospitals and stuff. I loved it. I was like, you can have all my medals. I don't even care. Like have them all. I, cause the medal to me is like it just hangs up in my closet. I, I didn't mm. win this darn thing. I just finished it. So, I mean, coming from a runner, friends, you don't have to have a fancy medal for your finishers. Though if you want us to wear the t-shirt, it should probably be soft. <laughs> I've, I've seen people give away hats, visors, um, headbands. I mean, you can make it interesting. You can make it, you know, it can be decently priced. Uh, I did the Pittsburgh half marathon. And granted, that entry fee was give or take a hundred bucks, but we got a nice, a real nice water bottle with our long sleeve shirt. So if you have like a premium race, a premium, um, you know, price point, you can, you can build in those kind of nicer items. Same with, um, if you get sponsors, this is a tip for your uh, nonprofit friends looking to throw races. Um, you can really, that's, you can really make the money on the sponsorships. So if you find some key partners um, you can basically ask them for whatever you want to ask for, you know, they can negotiate, but if you get five, 10 big sponsors that can cover the whole expense of the race plus more, and you might be able to pocket the entry fee. So, um, definitely ask everyone for sponsorships. So one thing that I thought was really interesting in our precursor conversation to this podcast was that you mentioned a few strategies that you learned to make sure that races were profitable. You were explaining that sometimes if you're really needing to get funds, maybe a 5K isn't even the right race, right? Um, so do you have any tips? Like you just shared a couple, the medals, the t-shirts, getting sponsors. Are there any other ones like kind of strategy wise that you would want people to think through? Yeah, you need to think about location because if you want to run in this downtown city streets of Tampa or Pittsburgh or wherever you are, if you want to close off roads and get police, that is going to be so expensive. I know it's beautiful and so fun to run downtown. You're seeing all these cool shops and people are waving to you from the coffee shop. But for example, in the race, let me, let me, I'm giving you two real examples here. If I hold a race on Siesta Key Beach, it's give or take $500 to rent, the, quote unquote, rent the space. That's really nothing. That's, that's about maybe 10 to 20 race entries. And we're talking if I get 150, whatever, it, it, it adds up. Now the Tampa Bay Park, Al Lopez Park, we have to shut down the entire park. Nobody can rent out reservations. We have to get overflow parking. It's, it's, it's a headache. It's like 2,500 to three grand just to hold a 5k race there in the morning because you're shutting it down for half the day. So that's something to think about. You can hold a $500 race on the beach or for 3000 you can be in a park. Um, as long as you have the race numbers, you can make it work. Um, and you did mention the distances. So 5k, I mean, what's the real max that someone's going to pay for a 5k? Uh, what would you pay Monica for a 5k? I think the most yes. I've ever paid for a 5k would be like 45 or 50 bucks. Okay. Um, that's because I really believed in that cause. Um, and it was more of a donation and something fun to do with my kids and dog and running partner. Um, but most of the time I'm looking to pay someplace between 25 and 30 bucks to run in a 5k. Okay. So that's great to know. Um, active.com came to Florida, invited all the local race directors together, and basically gave us a price breakdown. They said, 
how much in the state of Florida are people willing to pay for 5k? And, you know, everyone in the room, we kind of looked at each other and, you know, we're like 25 or $30, you know, whatever it is. They're like <laughs> people based on our data and the actual signups, the average person is willing to pay $45 for a 5k, which surprised everybody. And everyone's like, wow, I should be charging a lot more for my 5k. Um, but so that's maybe the cap. Whereas you throw a 10k, a half marathon, and you're charging $75, $90, $100 in entry. Maybe you want to throw a marathon. Maybe you're a baller. That's 125, 150 bucks. And that can really start to add up because once you have your park reserved, that's like you can run 5k or a half marathon if you want to do enough loops. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, it's really up to you, but the money is in the longer runs for sure. Yeah. I've definitely paid $120 to run a half marathon. Um, no, that absolutely have multiple times. It, <laughs> it's incentive. I'm going to train for the race simply because, um, yeah. And oh my goodness. So probably TMI, but, um, so my race partner and I, um, she ran in college, so she's very fast. She's competitive. I am a slow, slow running lady. Um, and so she and I had been running together for years and she was like, we ran half marathons before separately before we had kids and now we're both done having kids let's celebrate let's run a half marathon together so we run this half marathon together and um i was like here's the deal three miles out i'm just gonna tell you you can go as fast as you want to and if i can't keep up i can't keep up and she's like okay so this whole time i'm like keeping her on pace and then like three miles out she just like picked up the pace and i'm trying to keep up with her and like it's all I could do not to cry because I was running mm. so hard and it was so emotional that like the decision that we had made was like, now we're like going back to our roots as runners, doing something that we had done all the time mm -hmm. as, you know, young adults before we had kids. And now we're coming back at, deciding like no more kids. This is like a celebratory run for ourselves and like kind of reclaiming this part of our youth. And then she's running as fast as she can. And I'm trying to keep up with her, but it, but it like all of it like culminated into this moment of really intense emotion. And then, um, and then I just remember thinking to myself, you have a mile and a half left. You need to get it together. Like you can't finish this race if you can't breathe. And so I was like, put the tap on Monica, keep running. And it was great. And she actually like won our age group. <laughs> oh my gosh. I didn't keep up with her the whole time, but she like won our age group. And I came in like, I can't remember like seventh or something, but, um, well, kudos to her for kicking into high gear the last three miles of a half marathon, because yeah. usually those are some dog miles there. That girl can run. Like if she sees a person in front of her, she's taking them out. <laughs> I'm like, Hey, I'm going to put you breaks. I'm going to ask you the hard question here. Do you want to share your fastest half marathon time? Um, it was, Oh man. I ran like seven minute and 15 second miles. It was the last run that oh, I you're ran fast. So you're before fast. I had kids. It was in New Orleans and it was below sea level. And this is the last running story I swear I'll tell. But I remember running and looking at my watch because I was really like monitoring myself to make sure I could finish. My husband was a, a distance runner in college as well. He was like stupid fast, like four mile runs, right? Or like four minute miles, basically. Um, and I kept looking at my watch going, I am going to explode. I'm going to die, but I feel so great. I guess I'll just explode. And so I just kept running. And then my husband missed me at the finish line because he was looking for me like 30 minutes later. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm like, where are you? Like, I can't find you. And he's like, you should be finishing in like 15 minutes. What are you doing? And I was like, I back i'm i'm stretching yo i'm seeing, fast now <laughs> seeing one of your family or friends at the end of a race is pretty emotional um it is like i remember when i did my first marathon at um disney world which is by the way a spectacular place to do a marathon um there's a choir because marathon's at 26.2 at 26 there's a choir singing and by that point you're exhausted you're like oh my god i just did it and like I was bawling and then I see my parents in the stands. They came down to support me from Pennsylvania. You know, it was just, it was something. 
Yeah. So, hey, friends out there who are not runners, you can totally be a part of all the races just by showing up. My husband and my kids come out and they make little signs and they like hold them out and they like try to run in front of us and give us hugs. And it just feels so good to have everybody involved in the cause and like and and in the race. Well, that's kind of what we were trying to do with the Great Mother's Day race was, you know, what what do you typically do on Mother's Day with your family? And I'm just generalizing here, but maybe you get breakfast, maybe you get some flowers and candy, maybe you guys go out to eat. It's great. I love it. I love my mom. I love taking care of her. I love my family. But was there an experience that I could give them that they could remember? I remember traveling. I remember races. Can I give them an experience that they'll want to do together? That's more registrations, by the way. Can, they, can we do something together? Can we make it an annual event where maybe the son or daughter wants to beat the mom or vice versa year over year, get better, train, um, and create the tagline, an annual family 5K tradition? Yeah, I think it's smart. I mean, on my house on Mother's Day, um, my husband and his guy friends plant plants around my yard for me. <laughs> they landscape. They like just all go out and like wear their work jeans and get it done. It's, it's kind of cute. So I I'll know. I'll say, can I tell you where I failed though? Where? Well, so here's, here's something for the nonprofits out there. I created my event on a specific holiday. Mm -hmm. Where I failed is if something happens, catastrophe. Uh, that holiday, we may miss it. Something might happen. I can't go to other states and locations to hold it. I have to be in one place on one specific weekend. Whereas if maybe you have some flexibility on your races or race dates or names, you can theoretically hold that race anywhere, anytime, any time of the month or year. Yeah. Um, one thing I wanted to ask about was like, what makes a great race brand? And I think that's kind of what you're alluding to because some nonprofits are going to call it the name of their nonprofit. Others don't. Like one of, my, one of the, our Como Gives participants and a, um, a consulting client of mine is Molly's Miles. Like the whole thing is about a 5K, right? And so the 5K's name is Molly's Miles. The organization's name is Molly's Miles. It all like pulls together. But does that work for everybody? Like, do you suggest that they have another theme? Give me your branding advice. I mean, that's such a great question. And uh, I mean, you're the brand master, but um, let me think here. So there's a couple names that I cringe over and there should be some creativity. I don't know if necessarily Great Mother's Day race is any creative than anything else. Um, but mine's more so the experience than the name. Mm -hmm. So you can create a brand around an experience too. So our kind of thing that we love to do. We love to give free race pictures. You'll notice on bigger races, they'll put a giant watermark right in your face, but you can yeah. kind of see yourself running, which is it's fine. It's fine. You can post it on social and say, I was here, I did it. Look at me. Mm -hmm. um, but what we'll do is we'll have like our photographer out there. Everyone gets a shot. We'll upload it. We'll say tag it, share it. Um, we'll watermark it with our logo on the bottom, yeah. which it is a free thing that we're giving. But then we get the extended benefit of people sharing and tagging um, and seeing our logo there. Also, what we do that I have, my race partner and I have never seen at a race was um, a photo booth. We, we started bringing out an actual photo booth with our friends at Premier Photo Booths. Mm -hmm. Shout out, Chris. And they show up. They bring a ton of uh, disguises and mustaches and glasses. And that's completely free. Everyone gets three photos. And the photo booth is pretty advanced where they can upload it directly um, and, send a, and send to their phones. So people have it and they don't have to carry around the photos too. So um, it's those little things, little experiences that add up to something big, which helps the brand. And I think too, um, for my nonprofit friends, like these are great ideas and you have supporters that you could ask to either do like pay for part of a photographer's fee or pay for part of the photo booth or you could just ask the people at the photo booth hey would you be willing to donate your time to do this for us because yeah. you i mean if you thou shalt not ask if thou do not 
I mean, you thou shalt not receive if thou do not ask, right? Well, how do you say ask, that? ask, ask? Yes. And do you know people? Do you know anyone who can? Um, my favorite thing, by the way, for races, one of my favorite things is ambassadors, race ambassadors, aka influencers. Does anyone know anything about influencers out there? <laughs> um, people that will wear your stuff, will talk about your races, will hand out your postcards, will tell their whole HR department, hey, can we get 20 registrations for our whole team because we all want to run together and get our group shot. Um, we give our ambassadors, um, if they hit a certain threshold, like if they get five people to use a registration code, they get a free race entry. If they hit 10, they might get an Amazon gift card. 15 is like a, a baller gift. So um, that's one way to boost up. Yeah, you got to think big when you're trying to recruit. Uh, I'm sorry, creating one Facebook event will not do it for you. You got to partner with running stores. You got to get your posters up. You got to print thousands of postcards and put them at the Jamba Juice, at the Bowl Place, wherever you want to go. You got to get ambassadors and you got to physically mail them products. It's a it's a step and it takes a while and we did not do all this first year. So don't cry and say, I can't do it all. You can do it. It takes a step and you keep building, 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 building and momentum. You can do some small things too. Like, let's say that you have sponsors. Some of the races that I've ran, like the first time that I ever ran in Molly's miles was because my running partner, Carrie, her bank was like, Hey, Carrie, you run. Do you want a free entry? to this race. And Carrie was like, if I can get one for my running partner too. And, um, and then Roxy, she was the first dog to cross the finish line in that race. So like, she's a celebrity, but anyway, like we would have never ran that race if we hadn't have been given that opportunity by a sponsor. So you can always have your sponsors also reach out and, um, help you promote it by allowing them to have a race entry or whatever it is that you're sharing. So I would love to hear maybe like some of the benchmarks, like year one, you know, you're like, this is what we did. But then how did you adjust along the way to like find more success in your races? Um, more promotion. <laughs> year one, year one, we just linked up with a running store and they did basically running store promotion for us. Let us sit up tables, did the posters, did an email blast. Um, and then we started getting ambassadors. And then we partnered with a local newspaper and asked for a free quarter page ad. Um, and hey, we'll throw your logo on everything. The t-shirt and the bags, we'll hand out your newspapers, whatever you want, just give us a, and so now we're in the one of the biggest newspapers in Tampa Bay going out to tens of thousands of people. Also, relationships in life are everything. Um, I'm sure Monica has had some great relationships in her life, business-wise. Um, let me just tell you about one Susan Harmeling shout out um, in Tampa Bay has one of the best races in the United States. It's called the Gasparilla Distance Classic. Cats. It was a marathon but it's a, has, it's a half marathon, it's a 10K, 5K, it's a whole weekend. I mean, they get probably over all the races close to 50,000 runners. It's an event, 20 some years. And I developed a relationship with her um, just in the local running community. And I asked her, I was like, hey, Susan, um, you have a virtual goodie bag because with so many people, it's hard to do a physical product. Um, can we put our race and give a 10% off entry into the virtual goodie bag. And she said, yeah, no problem at all. So now our race is getting blasted to runners with a discount code and kind of a co-stamp approval from yeah. one of the largest races. So um, you just gotta, you gotta make friends. You gotta see how you can help. I volunteered with her race. Um, I, I helped close sponsorship deals for her. Like, um, you gotta, you gotta kind of pull a little bit of weight too, but, um, ask, be friends, network. Um, one cool thing is, um, in Tampa Bay, there was a race directors meetup every month. Um, we would talk and there's 10 of us, different races, different sizes. And we're like, how can we help each other? What can we do? Um, how do we not compete? Cause everybody can get a slice of pie. Everybody can make money. Every nonprofit who wants to have a race can be successful. There's money 
and service and volunteers for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, try, if, if there's not something in your community like this, make one, invite a friend, tell them to bring a friend. Um, and that's, I would recommend that as well because that was so much support and knowledge. That was key too, from year to one to three to five, this uh, race director community and asking for help. I could imagine too, that just by volunteering for a race that's really cool um, and has a lot of neat things going on, you could probably learn a lot from just volunteering. Like how do they manage their volunteers? How do they distribute their goodie bags? What like, what do they do at the finish line? It, it get a lot of questions answered. So I guess one idea might be if you're going to think about doing a 5K, maybe volunteer <laughs> for an existing 5K. <laughs> and, and take care of your volunteers. Uh, one thing Clara and I love to do, and this only happened the first three years when we were kind of smaller, um, we'd have maybe 10 or 15 volunteers. You didn't need too many for a 5K. And we would invite them to a barbecue after not directly after the race, but a couple weeks after we provide all the food, all the booze, have fun, come out as a thank you um, for doing that. Now, so that's the way that you're following up with your volunteers. Are you following up with your runners after the race? Like, do you keep in contact with them throughout the year or is it just kind of like once? Well, so the, the great mother's day race is happening. We're promoting the father's day race and then the great gay 5k. So they, they kind of step in, into each other a little bit. Mm -hmm. So there's always like, quote unquote, something coming. So there's a, the Father's Day race is in June, Great Gay is in August. And then we let it settle for three or four months. And then October, November, hey, race registration is live for Mother's Day. So it, it's kind of a, its own clock and wheel at this point. That makes sense, though, because once you figure out how to do it once, doing it on repeat to the same audience from a business perspective Makes you sense. have all the relationships, you have the people, you have all of the, the stuff that you need to actually hold the race, the cones, the cups, all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. the clipboards, tables. So as far as marketing goes, I mean, clearly you're a marketing person. What do you think is the thing that like moves the dial the most for you, for your signups? That's a great question. I think it's, I think it's the uniqueness of the event, um, mm -hmm. how we're branding it for the family. Um, we're not, we don't have many elite runners. We don't do like necessarily cash prizes for like top finishers. Mm -hmm. So we're not known for that. Other races are, that's great. That's how they, they roll. Ours is more about um, the experience. And I think, I think that is just what really matters most. It just brings people back. Yep, exactly. And, and the free goodies they get, the friends. Because remember, this, this would have been the 10th year that we've done it. People have done it year after year after year. And we make friends and people see other people that have done it. And there's groups down there. So there, there's a, a group of women called uh, Black Girls Run. And there's a huge community of these females that have these cool tank tops and they all attend the event year after year and it's mm -hmm. it's just really cool so it's like it's just a community thing yeah i i didn't realize that the go girl run was going to be so much like that like people were they came out in like costume almost for the go girl half marathon um so do you guys have so you mentioned that like some of the things that you do to build atmosphere are the photos and the photo booth are there other things that you found that worked well or maybe didn't work well in the past um, having a chiropractor there or like a massage therapist. Works People well. love that. Okay. Well, um, yeah. And we give amazing prizes. Um, <laughs> shout out to the Big Brothers Big Sisters. Um, they give us so many goodies to give away because they have a ton of key partnerships. So for example, we go above and beyond with their help. Not saying this is us. Big Brothers Big Sisters. Shout out. Um, so they have a partnership. We would get boxes of Girl Scout cookies. I'm talking thousands of boxes of Girl Scout cookies. And when you come to pack it, pick up, have you ever gotten a box of Girl Scout cookies? I mean, no. my husband bought them for me, but I've never gotten them on packet pickup day. Because <laughs> you weren't expecting it. And you should yeah. see the smiles. Um, they've donated like music. Like I remember they were trying to get rid of all these Metallica CDs, like the last Metallica album. 
and probably not our demographic of women running the Great Mother Series, but everyone got a Metallica CD and everybody got a box of cookies. Um, and we've also gotten glasses, like not, nothing fancy, like the one or two dollar plastic shades, but people love it. They wear it. Yeah. And we, we give those away. So we like to give a little bit more um, to people. Very fun. Um, okay, so any last advice to somebody who is thinking about doing a 5K fundraiser? Yeah, well, they need to understand, like, what exactly are you doing it? Why are you doing it? Is it to make as much money as you can? That's fine. I mean, if it's all going to your charity, that's great. Um, I would think about ways to maximize revenue, and that would be a longer race, preferably with places where you don't have to shut down the roads, and then um, getting the sponsors to really chip in some money. Um, I've also seen signups where like, um, you can create groups and invite all your friends and family and, and make it like a, a group activity. That can really increase registrations too, so I think that's a good idea. Okay, so I have one more question is are there too many like can there be too many 5ks is it like really saturated because i know that sometimes it feels like there's like two 5ks a weekend but you're in a spot where there are like a gajillion 5ks right i mean i would kill i would jump for joy if there was only two 5ks on a, a weekend <laughs> in tampa bay where the weather is beautiful year around any any given saturday or sunday there's probably four races every saturday four races every sunday now, Tampa Bay is spread up between Clearwater, St. Pete, Tampa. It's a big radius, and you can hold it in different areas. There's enough space. Um, but in those small towns, um, it's going to be hard because you're pulling numbers from other people. So here's my advice. Be respectful. Look at race calendars before you're going to hold a race. If you want to throw a race on a given week or given month, look online, do a Google search, 5K Race City, and see what's coming up, what has existed, try to be respectful of the race directors who have been there before you. Now, sometimes there will be complications and there will be timing issues, but try to pick a weekend where you're not cannibalizing from other races. Um, it's just best practice, but also you'll end up getting more runners if you're not competing. So um, just try to be respectful. So for all you friends out there who have questions, and you want to ask RJ all of those questions about how he markets his 5K and, <laughs> and or, or anything else, like you could ask him about digital marketing as well. How can they get a hold of you? So the race website is just greatmothersdayrace.com. Um, I would love to chat with you anytime, or any of your friends and family about the races. Um, hit me up, RJ at hbtdigital.com. Um, be more than happy to chat with them about that. And, you know, thanks for this platform, Monica may create. I love it. Um, <laughs> thank you for the uh, chance to speak a little bit about the races. Yeah. And for letting me tell my race stories because I don't get to talk about running very often. People think I'm kind of nuts. <laughs> <laughs> When's your next race? Well, I, we actually made the decision probably two years ago that we were going to run because we liked it and we weren't going to train for races for quite a while because we just feel like we love to run. I say we, me and my running partner, Carrie. So we just run. So we don't have a race on the books. Um, I do have a, a showcase that I'm going to do for my aerial though. <laughs> so I'm going to do my aerial hammock at a showcase in Jefferson city for um, Jeff city aerial arts. <laughs> But no runs, no runs on the books. <laughs> well, I want to invite you and your family. If you want to fly to Tampa Bay next year, <laughs> you can have a free race entry, the whole family, and come out, get the swag, get the pictures, and uh, create a family tradition uh, in Tampa. I do love St. Pete Beach. Love it. That place is awesome. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Thank you. So thank you so much for your time today. Once again, my name is Monica Pitts and you're listening to Nonprofit Marketing with Purpose. Now, before I let you go, I just wanna remind you about that little favor I asked you about in the beginning. Will you please review this podcast wherever you're listening? It will help us show up when people are looking for answers to the problems that this podcast will help them solve. So if you're a fan and you haven't reviewed the podcast, please, 
leave me a review. That would be so awesome. I would love to hear your feedback. And if this was your first time, I mean, double welcome. And I hope you learned a thing or two. So leave a review so we can connect with even more awesome nonprofits just like you and help them on their journey to less stressful and more successful marketing. Thanks again for your time today. Now, until next time, go forth and market with purpose.